Now in the case of this product, which is the fire smoke damper, one of the tests we have to do are fire tests. Um, the fire test itself isn't just testing the product, it's also testing the installation method. So depending on the type of wall that we're building into will depend on the type of installation method. So we have to test both the method and the product. So in the case of this one, which was put into a particular wall construction, if we were going into a different wall construction, we'd have to retest again, but in the new wall construction. Can I ask then, Steve, this is a life safety product. Yep. How vital is having all the testing done for this type oh, of product? It's essential with this, and certainly with the uh, newer regulations which are being done for fire testing now, where they've gone away from the old BS and we're testing to an EN standard which takes into account smoke, which is now recognised as being one of the main killers in the fire. It's actually the smoke that kills rather than the fire itself. Um, so this particular product was tested for smoke integrity as well as fire integrity and then it will be tested for a set time period which we will inform the test house. Um, we ran this one for two hours um, and then they will then produce a report whether, depending on whether the product passed or failed. Um, to give you some idea, this one by the time it reached its two hours the temperature inside the furnace was just over 1100 degrees centigrade. So what we can see is obviously deformation on the, the blaze on the damper because obviously as the furnace starts getting to that temperature these start getting very soft and the vacuum that's created that's being put on it to simulate smoke and the fan condition actually causes the blaze to move under that condition. The guide specifies a comprehensive list of technical information that the system designer should give to the damper installation company. This list includes the damper manufacturer's data sheets and illustrated drawings, dimensions, test data, sketches and any other technical information that needs to be included for the specific application. It is becoming increasingly difficult with the new European Standard 1366 to do assessments on installations that have not been tested. Due to this being a fairly new test, no manufacturer has significant amounts of test data to allow the test case to make an assessment in an application that hasn't previously been used. It is important to get these assessments and approvals correct up front. After the event is both costly and timely. A successful compliant damper installation is dependent on three key factors. The system designer shall include project specific sketches. These project specific sketches are to include all the damper manufacturers third-party tested data. Details of what should be included are in the appendix of DW145. It is also necessary for the principal contractor to create an installation schedule, making sure that all factors are taken into account and detailing all the trades that will be used in fitting of the damper, from the initial installation of the damper by the ductwork contractor to the barrier wall and then the seal penetrations. For a cost effective and successful installation, it has to be recognised that issues can occur on site during the project. It is important that these are addressed by the team. We would like to think that the CDM coordinator will take charge of effectively dealing with this. It is for the whole team to come up with a solution that needs to be presented to the building control officer and signed off before this proceeds. This will involve detailing new project sketches and working with damper manufacturer, damper installation and barrier element contractors. Damper manufacturers are not approved to and cannot give approval on a damper installation after the event. We need to take this to the third party independent body and have their acceptance before we can offer this to the building control officer. It is in the interest of the whole team that pre-handover inspection of the damper installation is based on an agreed check sheet. Whilst this is guidance in DW145, this will become very important when the CE marking comes into place in July 2013. It is also important not just to consider the installation, but also access to the damper for future testing. 
the Regulatory Reform Fire Safety Order came into effect in October 2006 and actually replaced 70 different fire safety laws. It applies to all non-domestic buildings in Wales and England and puts a responsibility on the business owner for the fire safety. It's important that he does a risk assessment and also has a planned maintenance for all the fire safety in the building. The needs of the building owner are changing. At handover, he requires both the installation and commissioning details to future testing and inspection procedures. Therefore, careful consideration needs to be given early on in the design stage of the building. Unfortunately, there appears to be a lack of awareness amongst the building owners and many of the fire risk assessors in regards to the ventilation system, the fire and smoke procedure and the fire strategy. In the past, risk assessments have looked at some of the more basic items such as signage, fire extinguishers and fire doors. But a recent report which is now available has shown that the FSO is looking more at the detail of the fire safety system from a ventilation point of view. Even to the point of where some business owners and also risk assessors have ended up going to court or even going to jail because they've not completed any assessments of the smoke control system. It is important that the system designer ensures that the fire damper selected meets the classification required, both for its performance in the system and for the installation where it is being used. This will require information from the damper manufacturer, in the, usually in the form of test data and also in the form of sketches. The test data that's provided is not transferable between manufacturers, damper types or wall constructions. So therefore careful consideration needs to be made that the damper selected will meet the classification and the application required. The methods and illustrations shown in section 6 of DW145 are provided for guidance and planning purposes only. The project specific sketches in the system design showing the installation will override those in DW145. Each detail in DW145 has a box containing the detail words that these are commonly used installations and are for guidance purposes only and should not be used in terms of recognising a compliant installation. Each detail will need to be supported by the damper manufacturer's test report. This is what might be happening if your damper has not been correctly specified and installed to the manufacturer's data. As we can see, the damper is not in the plane of the wall and is going through an I-beam. It is highly unlikely that this type of installation has been tested. We can also see that we now have a damper where the infill is with a bat infill. Again, has this installation been tested and has it been installed to the manufacturer's recommendations? And again, it gets worse. This is happening in many sites over the UK. We are lucky that in the UK we have not had a huge disaster for many years. But it is important that we try, as an industry, to do better. The people using the buildings that we design and build deserve it. So in conclusion, DW145 is a guide to good practice and not a specification and therefore feedback from the industry will be key to its success. Technical information is to be provided by the system designer to the damper installation coordinator. The use of third-party tested dampers and installations which suit the application is most important. The design, installation and inspection handover check sheets are good practice now and will become a real requirement from July 2013 when CE marking comes into force. The big success of DW145 is not just that it has been prepared by the HVCA, but that it has been endorsed by all industry associations. This is our industry 
recognising we have to do better.